click on the plus function button like this and I will call it uh, create random array this function should have a couple of inputs first should be a float it should be the the minimum var the minimum value that our array can have min value and let's create one more obviously the max value we need to know how many elements the array should have that is going to be an int And we would like to have, I would like to have our random stream also as an input. Let's compile. Okay. For this random stream, it's important to put on pass by reference so that we don't create a new random stream but actually are just referring to the random stream that we are going to put into this function that that's important now the first thing that's going to happen here is that we will make a for loop The first index is zero. That's the first uh, number that this for loop is going to use. And the last index is the number of elements. And I, I, I usually use the plus because then it's much easier to see that you actually are deducting one. If you just use the minus, it's sometimes hard to see what you're actually doing. So the number of elements, minus one, that's the last index here. And we are going to now create a lot of random floats. So let's just take from this random stream and screen. We're going to use the function called random float in range from stream. And here we can just take our minimum value plug into the min, our maximum value to the max, and up um, out from this function pops a random value in this uh, in this range. And this value we are now going to use into our function. So in the loop body, okay, and first of all, let's make a local variable in the function. This local variable will only be visible within the function. So it will not uh, have any effect on the rest of the program. And here we are going to use a float and it should be a float array like this. And let's call it uh, the return array. This is the function or the array that's going to be an output from our function like this. Let's grab this return array and use a get for that one. And we should use a function called add, which will add values to the array. As the value starts off uh, right now, it's empty. And the value that we are going to put into this array is our random float like this. So what this function will now do is that it will start on the first index which is zero and it will just go round around and round for each time it's uh, doing its loop it will take a new random value which is in the range of our mean and max and it will put it in the in this array and when this is done we should uh, return the, the array that we just have created so what we now need is to also create an output from our function this this should of course be 
an array of floats. Let's call it the random numbers like that. This should be returned when the for loop is completed. So we have to connect this, these dots here. And the actually return is going to be our random array like that. Compile, save, and we're done. To, to test this array, I will now make a function that will print the content of the array to the log. So click on function and uh, my Call it my print array. You can call yours whatever you want. And this array should uh, take in an array, of course, and an array of floats. The input array. Firstly, I like to make a, a print line. A print string like that. The reason I do this is because when you have a lot of uh, things going on in your log it's quite useful to see when your chunk of uh, numbers starts and when it ends. So I will just start the, the content with uh, these lines. Then we go to a for loop. For each we can use this line. So for each of the elements in the array, we are going to print them like this. And in our loop body, it should be fairly easy. Print string like that. I take the, the array element. We're going to print it. And we, when we're done, we are going to just print something to say that this was the end. And it's also useful to make this different from the from the one in the beginning. So we'll just use the stars for instance, like that. This is our function, compile it, save it, and we're now good to go to test our now let's go to the construction script and um, create our function like that. First we take the create random array function, connect it like this. And for the minimum value, we will use the, the, the min scale. For the maximum value, the max scale. The number of elements is going to be the number of rocks long. We will use the number of rocks high later. And for the random stream, okay, we see that we forgot to re rename it. My random stream like this should also be visible. And this should be connected like that. Compile it. Now this function will create our random numbers and output them. So all we need to do is to print them. So let's take our print array function connect it like this. Random numbers should be like that and we should be sort of set to go. Uh, when we drag this blueprint into the Unreal environment we will not be able to see anything so because it not, it's not creating anything in the beginning. So let's go to component and add a billboard so that we can actually see our, uh, our blueprint. Bill, yeah, so I searched for it before and add the billboard. This is just a little picture that will show us where our blueprint is. So let's compile it. Now I'm back into the level. Uh, I've just deleted the old blueprint, the old wall that was there. And let's now drag in our new blueprint, the random wall 2 in my case. This. And you can see each time I change it, it prints to the log. But it just prints our start and end line. The, the array is, is empty. The reason for that is that we haven't set up our function yet or our input values. So we have now selected the random wall 
let's put the minimum scale for 0.5 the maximum scale for point for uh, 1.5 and number of rocks long let's use uh, three three for now the number of rocks high it's not being used at the moment but we will use it later so let's put in three there as well the length of each rock let's use uh, 49 I will show you why and also the height of the rock let's use 25 and uh, by now you can see that we are starting to get our some numbers let's just clear the log and if I now just move this a bit you can see that each time I move it the construction script is uh, run and uh, our print function is run so we get these three numbers uh, all in the range of uh, 0.5 and 1.5 that we just put in here and you can also see that we get the same numbers each time that's because we ha are using the same random stream every time and uh, here we can see the initial seed if we change this let's just put one then we see that we get different numbers so this is the benefit of using a random stream so that we get the same numbers each time but if we want to have different random numbers we can just change the initial seed now just back to why we used the 49 and 25 if we go to the to the meshes and the bricks that we're using the if we just hover over them you can see that the size of these ones are 49 by 25 by 26 so it's uh, 49 long and 25 high that's why i'm using these numbers here and you can see that the the rest of the bricks are of almost the same size so that, that's why it works okay to use these four bricks together. <laughs>